Hello. All right. Welcome, everybody. I see that the evolution of QA has also happened. You know, people are talking business. People are trying to solve a business situation, you know. And technology is just technology, you know. It's just the means to the end. And so happy to see that, you know, QA is finally becoming the integral part of uh, any development out there. You know, we all are here to solve business problems, end of the day. But having said that, you know, I spoke to quite a few, you know, people here. And I thought I can categorize them into three <laughs> categories, if you may. You know, I found people, you know, who are doing something, you know, they have some issue, some business challenge, some initiative, but they really don't know what they need. You know, they are basically, I'll call them as browsing crowd, if you may. <laughs> they are just roaming around and trying to browse, you know, can this solve my problem, can that solve, but they don't really know, right, what is that they need. Second category is, well, they have understanding of a problem, they have some issues to solve, they may have a roadmap, whatever, challenges, et cetera, et cetera, and do, they do have some clarity on what they need. Okay, this is what I need, you know, the category number two. But the third is, you know, they, they, they have challenges, they have roadmap, they know what they want to do, they know what they need, but they don't know what and how, right? If you fall in any fourth category, I'd love to know. But I think, you know, these, this essentially covers the, the audience here, right? And it's fascinating that, you know, how uh, what we brought to this, uh, this event somehow uh, converges with all three categories, yeah? Uh, let me get quickly into the slide. Now, uh, everybody is talking about AI, AI is, is now core of the core, center of center, et cetera, et cetera. And as I said, I'm not a technology guy. I can't preach to the choir here, you know, how et cetera it is done. But having said that, you know, some of the points I thought, you know, I should list here and then we'll see how we bring it together, okay? We know the role of AI and ML in quality engineering can be immense, right? Uh, reusable test cases, you know, we can, we can use AI and ML to reuse a lot of stuff which we have done earlier, right? Automated testing, you know, learning from previous test cases, for example, learning about patterns in data, right? Root cause analysis, yeah? You know, defect classification, self-healing automation can be built, right? Uh, acquiring and integrating feedback, continuous improvement can be done, right? AI-based visual testing, you know, we saw here, and I thought I'll include this in my slide, right? Uh, quality control, obviously, right? And then end of the day, forecasting your costs, right? And then obviously insights, and, and there could be many more uh, things listed here, right? And one interesting thing which I noticed is that people have one solution to solve maybe one problem here, right? What could, you know, imagine can there be something, you know, imaginary, you know, which can bring everything together, right? And give me, you know, as, a, as an umbrella solution, right? Well, it's a wish list, wish. But that's what we are trying to bring here. Maybe we may not be able to solve everything what is listed here, but majority of it, right? And that's what we are calling it as next-gen quality engineering as a service. Right? When everything is as a service, is a software as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, we all are utilizing the benefit of it, then why not quality engineering as a service, right? Which is based on, anyway, uh, we'll talk about it, but then, you know, this slide, again, we all know, you know, again, the same thing. But then the journey, you may be in whatever stage of your maturity curve, but there is a journey involved, right? Moving from manual to automated, moving from reactive to proactive, intuition driven to data driven, time consuming to speed and consistency, right? There is a journey involved and this journey is in phases. And you all know, if you ask, your question, ask this question to yourself, <clears throat> you will know where you are, right? And then can somebody accelerate, provide that little impetus to take it forward, right? And we'll see how we are bringing it all together, yeah? Well, I'll not 
read again from this slide, we all know benefits are there. The only point I would like to make is benefits should be quantifiable. You should be able to measure the benefits. If you are not able to measure the benefits, right, well, qualitatively great, you know, I build a process, amazing. But if it's not reducing tangible, measurable outcomes, then that benefit usually is not really supported by your ROI, right? Uh, evolve, so the whole theme, whole theme of quality engineering as a service is built on evolve, right? While we wish that, you know, we can transform tomorrow and become that, you know, super jazzy, you know, shiny, you know, from wherever we are today, but end of the day, we know where we are. Right and evolve is a journey, and that's what quality engineering as services, uh, quality engineering as a service, tries to address. Right? You could be in simplified quality stage, you could be in digitized quality stage, integrated, automated, or intelligent quality as well. Right? What's the next level? Right? And this whole framework of evaluate, operate, launch, verify, and enhance is based on um, the same principles what we are describing here. Right? All right, let's see the next one. So what actually is quality engineering as a service? Okay, you know, we all, uh, at least my experience of 24 years, uh, incidentally, a lot of programs, I come from the system integration side. So I've worked in smaller projects, larger projects, but always we have seen that uh, QA as a separate piece, and people used to always tag, you know, how many QAs you will need to execute, you know, this is a development effort, how much QA? And generally people used to say, oh, it's 25%, 30%, number of bodies we used to count, right? How many QAs, manual, how much coverage in automation? It was always like that. It was something like, you know, hey, development team are the guys and then QA guys throw over the wall and, you know, uh, you know find the bugs and then blah, 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 whatever. We all have gone through that circuit cycle, right? But then what is QEAS, you know, why QEAS, right? We, as a company, Signet, we'll talk about Signet, we have seven, eight products, right? We have automation products, something like, you know, our friends are showing here. We have integration products, we have data uh, verification and validation products, which 600 plus customers are using, right? But we, we decided not to showcase those products here because we knew that products are not going to solve your problem, right? If products would solve problem, you know, world would be a very, very better place, right? They are just, again, means to an end, right? As I said in my first slide, QES is an on-demand concept, you know? It's a concept where we are saying it's on-demand. You need quality engineering services or solutions or capabilities when you need them. It can't be there forever, right? And it is very specific to the problems of your environment, your ecosystem. So QEAAS from Signet is an on-demand AI ML driven quality engineering services, okay? Now what does this include? Four things, right? As I said, end of the day, it's all about outcomes, right? But having said that, it requires the people expertise, right? You're trying to achieve something. You're trying to build in more AI into your program, right? You're trying to maybe automate few things. You're trying to integrate with some platforms. You're trying to do X, Y, Z, whatever, right? Now, one way to do it is that you acquire that capability, skills, take a lot of time. Second option is you bring in, you know, likes of big boys and try to get it done from them. Or you can have somebody like us who can come in for that specific problem only, bring in people expertise, bring in the right processes, methodologies, best practices, approach, templates, et cetera, whatever which are reusable from our capabilities, tools, which we, I mean, do you really need more tools or do you need less tools, right? Tool rationalization, so tools are core, but yeah, what tools are, uh, are going to be useful in your journey? And then obviously outcomes, yeah? You can buy a tool, but tool guys are not going to sign on the SLAs, which you are going to sign on, right? Productivity metrics, for example, you know? Defect ratio, whatever, right? <laughs> whatever it is, right? So. This is what it includes and benefits is flexible model, better ROI. We come in and then we try to solve that specific problem, take you from 
your maturity curve from level A to level B, and then we come out, right? You continue to operate there, the evolve cycle, and then when you are ready to move to the next level, you, either you can do it on your own, now that you know, or we come in again, right? <clears throat> All right, so we are not new. We have been in the business for 20 years. We are a solution-centric organization, which means that we are product developers ourselves. Okay, just to let you know, we are a text technology company. We support 35 countries. We are a fintech company. We have products and we support uh, companies. Um, we, we support industries in high tech, healthcare, and a lot more. So we are a services company, a solutions company, and a product company. That's why we understand the pain, right? Most of the products which we have built are built with the same challenge that we were trying to, we, we, we were seeing that you know, there were so many, so many tools out there, right? So our tools, our solutions are based on addressing the gaps which we could see in the market, right? Which are based around your problems and solutions based on your environment. Okay, we have, I mean, these are some, some of the numbers. Uh, uh, we support a uh, lot of customers. We have right ecosystem to solve any kind of technology solution out there or problem, if you may. Well, this is a framework, if you see it from down to up, you know, what we are talking about is, it's all about digital assurance. It's not just quality assurance, right? Whether it's your business assurance, technology assurance, or UX assurance, right? From the business assurance perspective, what kind of business process you are dealing with, right? Technology could be all kind of technologies, and then end of the day, it's all about user experience, right? We, we bring in our startup kit, which is already predefined, um, already out there, uh, then we have our launch pad, which has the right set of tools. Uh, you need not bring in you know, the same kind of tools. You have whatever tools, we can work through them as well. And then obviously as a service, right? Wherever it is required, which part of the world you need it, um, what, whatever model you want to operate in, you know, or, um, what kind of expertise you need, and what kind of innovation, et cetera, you need. So we, we bring in all these pieces together so that you know, when you are defining your solution, you know what exactly the end game should look like, what the end result should look like. All right, so uh, this is QEAAS. Uh, and then uh, I'll hand it over to Vivek, yeah. my colleague. My name is also Vivek. Uh, it's not by coincidence. <laughs> but anyway, having said that, so yeah, go ahead, Vivek. Let's talk about uh, some of the tools. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. So, uh, as Vivek rightly mentioned that we are always looking for a kind of a, a development statement. So, to minimize those things, we are uh, offering quality engineering as a service, like uh, AAS is like your agility, your assurance, and scalability. So, under that, uh, we are trying to solve multiple problems under one roof, instead of you finding a different vendors for a different problems kind of thing. So what's the core of this quality engineering as a service? So we do have a kind of a two uh, tools, like one is like TestingWiz, and another one is like TestingWiz Pro. So TestingWiz is like your uh, kind of an uh, AI integrated tool with respect to your object spying, your auto healing kind of mechanism where you'll just record, replay the things, and when you didn't find the objects, it will auto heal those problems or issues with respect to your automation script. So it's like an AI-enabled tool Apart from that, we do have an integrated OCR system in that. So a lot of QA is, uh, as of no means, if, if I give example, it's like you are uh, looking for a kind of a document processing. It's like from an structure to a structured one. So we are uh, solving that problem too. Instead of just uh, getting, grabbing the data from that, uh, we are validating those data too. Apart from that, it's like having intelligent object type, uh, which in turn I say like it's like a built-in recorder, uh, which will uh, look it for your uh, objects, end-to-end uh, -end kind of thing. Then you can manage the centralized repository if you are working uh, multiple user system kind of user privileges kind of system with respect to different modules. So you have a kind of a centralized repository with the user privileges. And then comes uh, the reporting part. So you will get kind of an enhanced report with this with respect to each test case. Uh, you can get it kind of end-to-end -end traceability over there. And we do support a multiple formats, means it's like a PDF, XML, 
uh, if you require it in JSON format or if you want to push it to the, some different test management tools like Jira, Zafar, or you want to be in an integrate with a separate thing, uh, we are open for that. Uh, apart from that, you know, like means every testing tool needs to be incorporated with CI CD pipeline. So that's kind of an in inbuilt in testing with. Uh, you can just plug and play kind of thing. You can do uh, CI CD uh, tools as well as bug tracking tool, as well as you can do uh, different kind of a browser uh, things. Apart from that, we do have an integration for a mobile, uh, both the platform iOS as well as Android. Uh, simulators are all also available with respect to the integration of a uh, few partners. And uh, if I'll talk about the testing with Pro, like yeah, just just most, one second, Vic, you know, just to add, sorry, is you know one thing which I also noticed, you know, in the event while talking to many folks, some of you are here probably, is that you know there are a lot of tools out there. People are yeah. selling, you know, X, Y, Z, and again the same point. How? much do you really need, right? So the idea of creating this tool, and this is in existence for the last six years, when we were building our own product, which is the, one of the world's leading product on tech side, is that can we extract those features? For example, right. the base core framework is based on Selenium for that matter, right? Now imagine you remove scripting need from Selenium. You are able to reuse or bring in all the data from Selenium and add all the features which small, small tools, you know, I have heard about multiple tools here, you know, and, and roaming around, yeah. you know, this feature is there in, in, in our tool as well. So idea is how we can integrate this whole tool probably into the solution of QEAS and derive some costs out, right? So that's, that's we have the demo yeah. and uh, post this session probably will invite you to our, our booth to, uh, to book a demo session and love to show you a demo uh, at, at the convenient time, right? Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah. Well, thanks, Vivek. Thanks for adding that. So I, I was talking about the testing with Pro. It's like an, uh, kind of another offering with respect to focus specifically on our data side. Uh, we know that as in a QA or as in quality center, we, we struggle with the data. So that's like a kind of an allows data comparison for ETL thing, as well as moreover, it validates and monitor your data frequently. And on top of that, we have created a kind of a prediction model. Like apart from that data, how you can predict the things like when will be your next failure will be there, or, or which module is failing most, uh, which kind of a code breakage is there, which kind of a, a leakages are there, so those kind of data is there and we can predict the things out of that, whether it's a kind of on a small release or whether it's like a big release kind of thing. Yeah, just, so, just uh, sorry. Yeah. Just a small analogy if I give you, you know, but I heard this from somebody. So, yeah, is that, you know, uh, do you really need a cannon to kill a bird, right? Uh, you don't, right? Uh, they said, okay, what do we need to kill a bird, right? Uh, <laughs> somebody said, okay, it's a pistol probably. But then the third point is, do you really need to kill a bird, right? I mean, <laughs> uh, what we are trying to do is we, we are all trying to kill the bird, right? right? We really don't, you know, for example, data is, you know, expensive tools. Expensive. Go and talk about a solution from AWS. You know, it's like massive $55,000, single machine license, blah, 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 and all that, right? I mean, you're trying to solve a problem with a cannon, right? <laughs> it's, it's not really required. So we created this tool just for pure validation and verification means is your data has to move from point A to point B, right, whatever it could be, you know, how much you really need to move. And, you know, all garbage, if you want to move to the cloud, great, good luck. But then the whole pretext of this solution was that. And now it's been used by so many customers, they're just loving it, right? So we can do the demo of this as well. As I said, I'm, I can't uh, explain the architecture and all that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. then having said that, when you see the demo of the use case, you will see, you know, it's, yeah. we are showing something on our screen, actually in the booth, you know, the, the time comparisons. And when you will see it, you know, you will, and it supports all platforms. You can think of any platform, Salesforce, ServiceNow, ERPs, whatever, right? Uh, from the data standpoint, yeah. Thanks. Sir. Uh, so the buzzword uh, everyone knows, like it's a generative AI, Akacha, GPT. <laughs> so the lot of buzz is around since la last four to six months, I think so. And uh, now uh, people are still thinking with respect to when they, they need to incorporate those things. But we took the advantage of that and we have integrated this along with our QAS framework. So uh, I'll try to demonstrate the things. Uh, before that, I'll showcase like it's like uh, how the uh, system works when uh, when you have a step one, uh, 
definitely some user stories are there. You will receive kind of an, a user stories in a first format, whether it's a QA, whether it's a developer, or whatever the whole team. Either your business analyst uh, provided the user's story along with exp, uh, ex criteria, acceptance criteria, and uh, whatever the proven exiting criteria. So that is a step one. Uh, in a step two, what happened? We provide the input of those particular user stories along with acceptance criteria. And we'll try to generate a kind of test cases. Yes, you heard it right. You need not write test cases. Automatically, it will generate the test cases on the basis of your prompts. And here, one case is like uh, people have asked me uh, when uh, we discussed uh, during demonstration that what about the data? Why we need to provide a data to this uh, your system or a kind of a chat GPT, right? That is kind of a security of a data. So we, we said like uh, we, we have uh, worked since the time of steps and drivers where we need not to provide other specific data. So here we can exploit the system with kind of dummy data. And then we manage to map those data to over testing with real data or your application data. So in that manner, we can handle that part uh, where you're not losing your data security kind of thing. Uh, in step two, we'll try to provide a whatever the test cases. It's like a numerous, you mentioned the numbers, and ChatGPT is ready to create those things. And step three is like an auto quit generation by uh, ChatGPT. It's like an, a standard quote uh, on the basis of your prompts and on top of your uh, manual test cases, which already ChatGPT has created. At step four, I can say like, uh, we have integrated the both worlds like AI ML or generative AI plus our testing with uh, on an API interface in background, which will check the standard code and try to uh, map with our testing with code. It's like an uh, auto generation script with a uh, intelligence or with a uh, real data. Step five, I can say is like uh, you can do start execution or scheduling the execution by utilizing our platform testing with. And at last, you'll get the testing with reports. So I'll, I'll just showcase that thing next. So you'll get a clear idea like how things are working. So this is your step one. So here, uh, we are uh, trying to showcase demonstration using this website. You know all e-commerce e websites are there. It's like a course application where uh, you, uh, once you'll receive a user story like from your business analyst, uh, to check means whether you are able to add the cart, whether you are uh, uh, that cart uh, moving forward with respect to the checkout process, and at last you have to fill whatever with the details in that. So that's the kind of a basic scenario. Uh, I'm showcasing the scenario first, and uh, later on how ChatGPT is handling this scenario, we are trying uh, try to de demonstrate. So here are some few examples are like that. I have logged in to a particular uh, website of e-commerce. I'm trying to add few few of the contents or a few of the uh, item cards thing. That's your user story. Then I've added few things, cart. I'll try to uh, pull in my address, whatever the full name. I'll try to provide my card number. And then whatever the expiration and CVV things. So this is a basic uh, case which everybody knows. And we can correlate with how we can handle these things, right? The, this is a mo most crucial part where you are providing the data, right? In generative AI, if I say uh, you are providing data here, this is like you are providing the dummy data, but in real time, you can mix it with the real data. So this is uh, one scenario, and uh, in step two, which I have said like uh, no generative has started, our QS framework will start prompting the on the basis of that, and this is the interface of uh, generative AI where you can see. Uh, we have given the prompts for positive scenario, or for negative scenario, for security test, and for a SAST is like a kind of an aesthetic uh, security tool kind of thing. And even though you need test cases, so you need not to worry about generation of all these things. Just by providing a 500 prompts, uh, that structure is available. You will able to generate if you see the output, all the code, along with your details of validation and. Beside the scene, you will get the input output Excel also created. And you can put those Excels into import export with respect to whatever be your different tools. The third step I can say is like uh, leveraging the standard scripts. Uh, those scripts are standard scripts. Now we are trying to pull it with respect to our tool called TestingWiz. So assume like the first step is I have created the dummy data. 
and second step now we will start with the real data kind of now you can see the positive scenarios and all and even the real data of uh, variable things i am putting those variable data to the uh, standard generated testing scripts so here you see if testing with output is blank as of now we'll uh, execute the cases along with uh, testing with and here you will get uh, detailed data afterwards so this is the interface of uh, testing with uh, here we'll try to run the things uh, whatever be the scripts behind the scene generated by uh, chat gpt and we executing the positive and negative scenario so i have given the prompt of positive negative scenario it's created already if you can see a screen you will see like already positive and negative scenarios are created by chat gpt it's totally automated guys it's, it if you run the prompts it will happen in fraction of minutes and in our case is hardly 3 to 2 minutes we have created all the things now it started taking each one case it's starting validating negative things first where it's uh, giving the email wrong email kind of thing wrong password kind of thing and then gradually it's checking all the things one by one assume like if somebody is trying to do the same thing assume like one test case i need to create like it will take at least 2 to 3 days to scripts uh, the complex scenarios like uh, credit card one but in this case we are generating all those things in less than kind of a 5 minutes so that's kind of a miracle i i think so right it's it's a very good tool for a qa as well as a kind of a developers apart from that you can download the pdf uh, with respect to the details which i have said like our uh, testing with data is giving the end to end kind of a report uh, with respect to the nice dashboards and you export the data into the pdf format where you will get whatever the operating system details whatever with the suit details with respect to test cases uh, what are the steps Uh, where the failing steps it will mark as a red so you'll get a kind of a detailed reporting uh, in this tool uh, it's like an a core of end to end thing so with that i'll try to move on the next one yeah so uh, as uh, uh, vivek koshik has said like we do have a seven products in house and we do have a several projects going on we have done a kind of sampling of those things we already initiated uh, using generative ai so we got an like from user story prospect we get a kind of a difference you see the difference huge difference is like we are investing 300 minutes before for user story generation and now we are coming up with a kind of a 70 minutes then again it's like a development of ui and back end uh, you have invested somewhere around 1440 hours kind of a traditional method and with the generative ai we are claiming you can do it in 140 minutes then comes to a kind of an a functional test cases uh, see the difference is like a huge difference again is like you can generate the same thing in 320 minutes uh, for for a huge application called a total e-commerce solution and uh, uh, traditional method is taking 1440 minutes then comes to your generating code snippets uh, which is like a tedious task for a generation of a code uh, we are able to deliver in 1460 minutes as compared to 2880 minutes before so the overall sprint cycle reduction is somewhere around 60% so assume the kind of an roi you'll get it out of this so it's not just kind of a, uh, you can utilize this in uh, one sector you can utilize in the whole sdlc life cycle or agile cycle so with this uh, we would love to show you the demos of as i said tool is a tool but overall demo of our solutions qe aas what it means understanding your problem and then try to create povs around it so that we can enable you to move from level 1 uh, to level 2 and then obviously you may have 10 levels to go right thank you for attending the session lot of things are possible it's all about art of possible uh we have just started so would love to hear from you your uh, problem areas your what whatever you are trying to uh, achieve in your objectives right can we participate in them and be a small part of your success mm -hmm. wish you good luck with your journey